What's up guys and Yush Dimesh. I am here at Tbilisi International Airport in Georgia. Today I'm going to be flying with number four airline in whole of Kazakhstan, Skat Airlines. From here over to Almaty, stopping at Aktau in Kazakhstan. What will it be like flying on Skat Air? Will it be as bad as the name suggests or will it be very nice? Let's head inside and find out. I'm a Skat Man! <laughs> The terminal building here at Tbilisi is very nice indeed. It opened in 2017 at a cost of over $30 million. Scott Airlines leaves Tbilisi at about 2 o'clock in the morning so I had quite a few hours here to kill time at the airport. I decided to try a traditional Georgian dish called Abkazura which is basically spicy meatballs. High five! Other than the little restaurant there wasn't really much more to do outside before we could check in. Check in finally opened at about 11.30 at night. Thank you. Do you have any hand luggage? Uh, just this, please. I've it already. Ah. All right. I give you emergency. Pardon? Emergency. You have emergency. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. At least having the emergency exit meant that I'd be first out if anything happened. I should mention that until very recently, Scat Airlines were completely banned from flying in Europe as they were on the EU no-fly blacklist. I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous about this evening's flight. I headed across to the Prime Class Lounge, which I got access to with my Priority Pass membership. Priority Pass is a great scheme that gives you access to over 1200 airport lounges all around the world. Regardless of which airline or class of travel you're flying in, check out the link in the description below for a nice discount off a membership. The Prime Class Lounge here is pretty compact and there aren't any views over the airport, but still it's really comfortable and a nice place to spend a few hours ahead of your flight. There's a nice range of complimentary food and drink here, but just remember that alcohol isn't self-service here and you have to go to the bar to get it. It's still free though. So I'm here at the Prime Class Lounge at Tbilisi International Airport here in Georgia. Got a really nice glass of Georgian white wine here. Georgian wine is absolutely delicious by the way. Even the dry is really drinkable and really nice. It's very good. Highly recommended. We usually get actually a bottle of Georgian wine given at the passport check as you come through here, but it seems they've stopped doing that now. About another hour then before my flight over to Aktau in Western Kazakhstan. It's literally an hour flight from here on a CRJ200. Um, so quite looking forward to that with Scat Airlines. And I've got a couple of hours in Aktau before we head across to the east of Kazakhstan to Almaty on a Boeing 737-300, a really old plane they've got in their fleet. Um, they're not exactly the most modern aircraft in the world, the CRJs or the 737s, but it's a nice, unique way to get across Kazakhstan. So quite looking forward to my experience with Skat Airlines. Glass of wine finished, it was time to head to the gate. Tonight we were boarding from a bus gate, which meant we had to go downstairs to the ground floor. While I was waiting to board my flight, I got a breaking news alert on my phone. It was to tell me that a Boeing 767 aircraft had crashed on approach to Houston Airport in the US. It was tremendously sad to hear about and to be honest, not what I wanted to read about really when I was about to warp one of the most dangerous airlines in the world. Feeling rather shaken from the events over in the US, I headed out to the bus that would take me to my aircraft for tonight's flight. It was pretty cool to be driving right past the Antonov 124 that I'd seen on the ground earlier on. And here's the aircraft that would take me over to Aktau in Kazakhstan this evening. It's a 15 year old Bombardier CRJ200, originally delivered to the German airline Eurowings in 2004. It's been flying with Skat Airlines of Kazakhstan since 2012. Once inside, the cabin looked fairly dated, but still relatively comfortable for such a short flight. I 
I headed to my seat in the exit row, row 8. I don't usually enjoy the exit row because it means I can't have my bag under the seat in front of me, but actually the extra legroom was really welcome on tonight's flight. The window was rather predictably very scratched indeed. I won't lie, as we pushed back from the gate, I was actually pretty nervous about tonight's flight. The flight attendant came around handing out pre-takeoff suites, and also reminded me rather helpfully that in the event of an emergency, I'd be the first person off the plane. Great success. So for the first time ever I actually paid attention to what he said and took a look at how the door opens and tried to memorise it as much as possible just in case you know. We taxied out to the runway to begin our flight across the Caspian Sea. Here we go. We lifted off into a beautiful clear sky overhead to Plessy, getting some great views of the city lit up at night. The tower that you can see lit up in purple is a Tbilisi TV broadcasting tower. It's one of the major landmarks of Tbilisi and stands almost 275 metres tall. So let's take a look at the route of tonight's first flight. After our scenic departure from Tbilisi, we flew east over Georgia, across the Dagestan region of southern Russia and out over the Caspian Sea. From there it was an approach and landing into Aktau's runway, which is just on the coast of Kazakhstan. Flight time tonight was 57 minutes at a cruising altitude of 33,000 feet. It was a really short flight tonight, so there was just time for a quick drink service as we crossed the Caspian Sea. Before too long we were on our final approach to what can only be described as a smashdown on runway 12 at the desert city of Aktau in Kazakhstan. It was a pretty fun landing guys. The rather nervous clapping from some parts of the cabin stopped as soon as it was clear that the pilot had no intention of starting to break just yet. I breathed a rather nervous sigh of relief as we taxied off the runway and I eased my grip on the armrest. We pulled onto standard Aktau right on time. Aktau is one of Skat Airlines largest hubs and offers flights all across Kazakhstan and the Caspian region. It didn't take very long at all before I got my first telling off on Kazakh soil. This guy didn't seem too impressed that I'd just taken a picture of the plane. 
Unfortunately, me feigning ignorance kind of helped me in this situation, and he just turned back around to continue his faithful duty of protecting the glorious nation of Kazakhstan against the global threat of unauthorised photography. Aktau Airport is much smaller than I imagined it would be. After completing my entry card into Kazakhstan and getting stamped through with the passport check, I made my way through to the departure hall. There's no air side connections here at Aktau, so you just have to go back through security again. It's a tiny airport though, so this really isn't a problem at all. I had about 5 hours ahead of my next flight, so I was really hoping to find somewhere to get my head down for a few hours. However, it seems that the only thing that you have airside act out is this little departure lounge and a cafe at one end, so I was going to have to make do for a few hours sleeping here. There were a few other people sleeping on seats here in the departure lounge. There were quite a few connecting flights through Aktau overnight, as you can imagine. I was, however, really surprised to find quite a few British people sleeping here. It seems that for people working in the gas and oil industry, which is one of Kazakhstan's largest industries, Aktau is a convenient place to connect into the smaller towns and cities around Kazakhstan. Right, so I have about four hours until my flight over to Almaty, so I'm going to try and get some sleep. It's kind of three o'clock in the morning here in Aktau, Kazakhstan, and I'm going to fly out. It's alright seven o'clock or something. So I've got my noise cancelling earwoods here. Which I will sure pop in. Silence. Brilliant. My travel pillow which kind of doubles up as a eye mask to shadow out the light which it looks a bit silly and a bit ridiculous but it's comfortable and it kind of goes something like that. And blocks out all the light as well. It's quite comfortable actually, surprisingly comfortable. So I'm going to try and get a few hours of sleep now. Let's try and get some sleep. Good night. Okay, so it is 20 past 6 in the morning. I think I've managed a little bit of sleep, but not a great deal. Here yeah, at Robert Aktau Airport in Kazakhstan. Just heard over the tunnel that my flight over to Almaty is delayed by about an hour. So that's every single SCAT flight I'm going to have to tell this one will be late by at least an hour, so I don't know what's going on. But it does mean that I've used my connection um, out of Almaty, which I need to look at separately. It's not with SCAT, it's with um, Aristana. I need to look at what I'm going to do with that. Um, fingers crossed we can get that changed to a bit of a later time or something like that. Let's see. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to speak to somebody and figure out what's going on and see just how delayed we're going to be getting over to Almaty this morning. But that was rather naive and optimistic of me. Of course, there was nobody from Scatter Airways anywhere to be found. My original plan when I got to Almaty was to connect down to Tashkent with Air Astana and then connect into Uzbekistan Airways for my flight back to Frankfurt. However, with the delay from Skat Airways now reaching two hours long, I'd clearly missed this connection and I had no idea how I was going to get home at the other end. I'd originally booked about a 90 minute connection in Almaty, which I thought was plenty of time, but clearly in Kazakhstan there is no such thing as too much time. A little over two hours after our scheduled departure time, we were called for boarding via gate 202. However, all was not as it seems, and on arriving at gate 202, I was told that this was the wrong gate and this was actually a flight going somewhere else in Kazakhstan, so I made my way back once again to the departure hall. The lack of any information whatsoever on any of the departure boards really didn't help me at all, but somebody soon came around and shouted that our flight to Almaty was going to be departing through gate 102, not 202, so off we went to gate 102.
Once again, I've been sent to completely the wrong gate, but this guy told me to just stand around and wait where my flight to Almaty will be going pretty soon. Or at least that's what I hoped. Loads of other people here were waiting for the same flight as me, and fortunately I'd had the sense to ask the gate agent whether this was the right flight, as loads of people just ended up boarding completely the wrong flight and having to come back. It didn't help that they weren't actually checking the boarding passes as people were getting on the flights, they were just handing them all across and then scanning them all in once the flight had departed. Once the boarding passes had all been scanned in and they realised that half the passengers were on the wrong flight, another herd of passengers joined us down here at gate 102. Surely this was going to be my flight third time lucky and all that. What happened next I found absolutely hilarious as every passenger that had just come downstairs fought their way to the front to try and get out to the bus first. I'm really not quite sure what everybody's hurry was. However, once again, it soon became very obvious that this wasn't the Almaty flight either. Once again, the gate agent took everybody's boarding passes off them and only started scanning them through once the flight had departed, at which point she realised that half the people had boarded the wrong flight. A couple made it back to the gate, but most didn't, so I have absolutely no idea where those passengers ended up that day. Finally, after waiting down at this gate for about half an hour, the flight to Almaty was announced for boarding. I rather hesitantly gave the gate agent my boarding pass and made sure that she scanned it to make sure I was on the right flight before I actually headed out to the bus. Thankfully, finally, it was the right flight. Once all the Almaty passengers had been crammed onto the bus and presumably some passengers that were due to be flying somewhere else, we made our way over to the waiting aircraft that would take me east to Almaty this morning. My ride east to Almaty today was on this 21 year old Boeing 737-300 painted in Scat's shiny new livery. Unfortunately the inside of this aircraft wasn't quite as shiny as it looked from the outside. This aircraft was originally delivered to Garuda Indonesia Airlines in 1998. Since then it's had a colourful history, flying for airlines such as Air New Zealand, Freedom Air International, Webjet Airlines in Mexico, Viva Aerobus also in Mexico, and finally the delightful SCAT Airlines who have had this aircraft in their fleet since 2017. Once on board you couldn't escape the luminous green seats and beaten up cabin that this aircraft still had. I don't think this aircraft has seen any renovation in the 20 odd years since it started flying. I took my seat in row 17 which is right towards the back of the aircraft. The state of the cabin was very poor. The seats were really worn out and in places the cabin looked like it was falling to pieces. We eventually pushed back from the gate about two and a half hours after our scheduled departure time, but the fun didn't stop there. As I sat looking out the window, I noticed a bit of a commotion going on across the tarmac. It was a dog being chased across the airport by two guys in pickup trucks, and to be fair, it didn't look like they were being that successful. Just wondered how much more excitement we could take on this trip as we taxied out to the runway here at Actau. As we climb out over the desert of Kazakhstan, let me talk you through the route that we took today. After takeoff, we flew northeast towards the Uzbekistan border, across the north of Uzbekistan, and then directly east across the plains of Kazakhstan to Almaty. Flight time today was 2 hours 40 minutes at an altitude of 33,000 feet. Mm -hmm. 
Considering this flight took place on a Sunday morning, I thought the flight was really full. Skatair are one of the largest domestic airlines here in Kazakhstan and a lot of people use it as it offers the cheapest fares, generally compared to the other airlines. The views out of the window were pretty incredible I have to say, and it was much like flying over the southwest of the USA. As the breakfast service started I began to wonder what delights I'd have facing me today for breakfast. This delightful meal is what I had for my breakfast today. It was sweet pancakes with some sort of meat substitute product in it, with some sort of random cheese slice placed on the top, and also a cake which was ominously named Boom. Not really the sort of thing I want to see when I'm flying. The food tasted absolutely revolting. I didn't even manage a full mouthful, I have to say. I drank the water down orange juice and gave the rest back to the flight attendant. I was absolutely starving, but I wasn't that hungry that I was going to eat that. The cabin was really worn out, it's been in use for a very long time and doesn't look like it's ever been refreshed. I thought I'd take a quick look through the Skatair magazine. It's all written in Kazakh or Russian, but it does include some information about the fleet of aircraft that Skat Airlines fly. They have such a wide range of Boeing aircraft as well as a load of CRJ200s that they operate all across Kazakhstan and the local region. Skat actually stands for Special Cargo Air Transport. It was founded in 1997 and has its main base at Shymkent International Airport. The airline was banned from flying in the EU until about two years ago, and in the last couple of years they've only had two major accidents, one of which didn't have any passengers on board. Rather worryingly though, the other one was on approach to Almaty Airport, which is right where we're heading to today. SCAT does seem like a really popular choice for people flying around Kazakhstan cheaply. The skies over Kazakhstan are pretty busy and we did pass a couple of other aircraft, making their way down to China which was just to the south of us, or heading west back to Europe from the far east. The flight from Tbilisi across to Almaty today cost me £138 or around about US$180. Dollars. For a total flight over 1600 miles long this only cost me about 8 pence per mile which I didn't think was too bad. Air Astana on exactly the same route from Tbilisi to Almaty by Aktau charged well over £300. So it's clear that SCAT are one of the cheaper options of getting around Kazakhstan by air. My next problem was how I was going to get home from here in Almaty. My flight down to Uzbekistan had been missed and there was no other flights down to Tashkent operating today. It was time to decide how on earth I was going to get back home to the UK from Almaty. My original flights with Uzbekistan Airways via Tashkent had now been missed and I was effectively stranded here in Almaty until I could book another flight. I had a quick look through the departures board and it seemed that most flights were heading up to Astana and I hope that if I got up to Astana I might be able to find a way home from there back to the UK. Check out my next video to find out how they got home. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think to Scat Airways in the comments section below. Chinkwee and see you next time here on In Flight Video.